For more than 70 years, American historians have wrongly blamed an Australian air crew for contributing to a Second World War naval disaster. 1,200 Allied sailors died in the Battle of Savo Island in the Solomons. The sole survivor of the air crew is now 94 years old and he's never stopped fighting to have history corrected. Adam Harvey reports. August 1942. Desperate days in World War II. After the disaster at Pearl Harbor, US forces are finally striking back against the Japanese at Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands. Under cover of the fleet's concentrated fire, the Marines land. The attack took the Nips completely by surprise. But Japanese reinforcements are on their way and the Allied fleet stands by. The Marines have a toehold, but they're vulnerable to counterattack. An Australian air crew is on the lookout. Four young men, average age 22. When we joined up, we became friends, and we were friends for the rest of our lives. I'm the sole survivor and the last man standing. Eric Geddes is radio operator and gunner. His battle didn't end in 1945. For 70 years, he's been fighting a terrible slur against his crew. If I put it in tomorrow's newspaper that you were responsible for the death of 1,023 sailors, how would you feel? We were angry and we couldn't believe that this could be. We just couldn't believe it. Eric Geddes and the crew of the Lockheed Hudson were part of an RAAF squadron at Milne Bay in New Guinea. They were all low-level patrols, and our purpose was to gather intelligence about Japanese movements in the areas, whether or not they were active or whether they just weren't about or what was happening. His immaculate logbook records each patrol including one on August the 8th, 1942, the day after the Marines land at Guadalcanal. I could nominate that particular event from takeoff to landing and I wouldn't miss a trick. The Hudson crew tracked north from Milne Bay over Goodenough Island and spotted a Japanese convoy steaming towards Guadalcanal. How far away were they? Well, we didn't need the binoculars to work it out, let's put it that way. They then set up two fighters to take care of us. So we thought, well, we can't stand and fiddle around with these people because we've got to deliver this intelligence. And I promptly got onto the radio and tried to contact Milne Bay. There was no answer. Eric Geddes kept tapping away in Morse code on his radio transmitter. When we arrived back at Milne Bay, I was surprised we were back early and the intelligence officer arrived at the end of the runway when we, we landed and we were debriefed and we, we gave them uh, precisely what I've just told you. Thanks to the Australians' work, the Allied ships defending Guadalcanal should have known what was coming. But Eric Geddes' warning was not acted upon, with devastating consequences at a place called Savo Island. The HMAS Canberra was part of the fleet. Then night, and a counter-attack by Japanese warships. I uh, was off the watch on the bridge of Canberra. We were just uh, sitting there when suddenly uh, this cruiser force of five heavy cruisers, two dest one destroyer and two light cruisers suddenly uh, attacked us. We were out of the war after two and a half, three minutes. The Allies were routed. More than a thousand sailors died. Three US ships and the Canberra were lost.
Well, the Battle of Savo Island was undoubtedly the most humiliating defeat at sea suffered by the U.S. Navy during the entirety of the Second World War. And the Aussies got the blame. To the Americans, it looked like they hadn't done their job properly and allowed the Japanese to obtain an element of surprise that uh, resulted in such a disastrous outcome. Harvard historian Samuel Morrison was commissioned by President Roosevelt to write a history of the Pacific battles. And he attributed the Allies' defeat at Savo Island in part to the Australian Hudson crew. The pilot of this plane, instead of breaking silence to report as he had orders to do in an urgent case, or returning to base, which he could have done in two hours, spent most of the afternoon completing his search mission, came down at Milne Bay, had his tea, and then reported the contact. He was accused by Morrison, the naval historian, of not breaking silence, of dilly-dallying on the way back to Port Moresby, and having his tea before he was debriefed, all of which was complete nonsense. We don't really know exactly where Morrison got the notion that the Hudson crew had stopped to have tea before they turned in the report. We do know that he was, like most of the Americans who had uh, been familiar with the operation, was very humiliated by what had happened. We were pretty upset about this and disturbed about the situation. You can understand why Eric Geddes is still so unhappy more than 70 years later when you come here to the Australian War Memorial. Samuel Morrison's 14 volume work on World War II is part of the collection, so it's one of the places where his claims about the Hudson crew live on. Samuel Morrison has long since been proved wrong. Ship for ship, the Japanese had a superior navy, and uh, um, that may be unpalatable to the United States, but uh, uh, they were simply outfought. Well, I would say to Mr. Geddes that his mission has been accomplished uh, through his efforts and also through the work of other historians. Uh, the failures that did occur that led to the defeat at Savile Island were multiple and shared uh, at many levels, uh, primarily by Americans, and no one uh, now writing about this would uh, single out and certainly uh, write in such demeaning terms about uh, this particular Australian air crew. But Eric Geddes wants official US recognition that the Australians did their best. My problem is not our history, it's American history. And that has, that has a lot to answer for. He's taken his campaign to the top. My ambition is that President Obama actually gets to read the letter I wrote to him. I think he's a man who really would understand the truth and facts when he reads them. And to be respectful to my other three comrades who are no longer here to talk for themselves, I feel that I have the liability of doing this. And I suppose the day I drop off the perch will be the day that I'll forget about it.